show. No rules. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Dogs on the Run begins now. Oh, it's a happy Monday, isn't it? Hi, everybody, and welcome to Dogs on the Run. I'm Andy Baskin. This is Andre Knott. And, uh, Andre, look, we want to welcome everybody here on Newsnet 5 as you've been joining us week in and week out on Dogs on the Run, 216-431-3820. Can't say it enough times. 216-431-3820 or Skype in. That's what we like to see. We like to see a Skype in at Dogs on the Run. Uh, let's just get going here and we'll introduce you to the whole cast of characters right. in a minute. But, Andre, your thoughts on yesterday's win? First of all, you didn't tell them the main rule of this show. There, there are, are no, no rules. rules. No. So have some fun with this. I think yesterday was just great because it's been 10 years since the team has won a home opener. I think when you say that, that you know, you have to really think about. Fourth graders. Yes. Fourth graders have never experienced Fourth graders a home have win never season. seen that. Yeah. I mean, when Brian Hoyer tells you after the game, yeah, I was graduating from high school back in 2004. What does that make you tell? What does that tell you about this team and where they've been? Great day to celebrate. The stadium seemed like a new stadium and it seemed like a new team. Maybe this is the turning of a corner. Well, it feels good, doesn't it? I mean, that's yeah. really the, the biggest thing. And I think it makes you realize, again, how hard it is to get a win in the NFL. And, and I, you know, some teams might just expect to get a win every Sunday, but I'm sure that New Orleans lost their first week. They come in here and they're like, all right, we're in Cleveland. It's at Cleveland. Let's calm this yeah. thing down because we've got a chance to play against a team where most of the time the Browns can't win at home. But I'll tell you this, Andre, the one thing that really stands out to me beyond what happened in the second half, beyond what happened, is the way the defense set the tone right in the beginning of the game. I mean, we're talking about hard hitting. We're talking about blasting guys. Drew Brees had nine yards of passing in the first quarter. That's what I think really set the tone. And they, you know, they, they talk about it in the front office about the reconfiguration of the stadium and how they brought folks closer to it. Yeah. And they want the place to be a place where teams are intimidated by. Now you can do all those things on the outside, but the defense delivered that in the first quarter. In Cleveland, you have to play that way. And I think the thing about the defense, what they were able to do in the first quarter helped them the rest of the game. They couldn't play at that pace for the entire game, but it got the crowd into the game. It got the offense going and got the team a lead. And it was completely different than last week. And for me, it's exciting because they went out and they've spent a lot of money on defense. Uh, they come in with all these defensive coaches. And when the way they started the game last week, that was a little, that scared me because I'm going, wait a minute. This is supposed to be a defensive-oriented team. They do that yesterday. They get the crowd behind them, and that gave enough time for the offense to kind of get going. You know, and, and once they did, uh, look, New Orleans is going to move the football on you no matter what. Look, I was one of those people yesterday, 24 hours ago, going saying, hey, I don't see the New Orleans Saints starting 0-2. They have done that. Now the Browns have a legitimate chance because we all said coming into this season, they had three games before the, uh, before the bye. If you can win one of these games before the bye, schedule gets much easier after week four. Start off, I think, in Tennessee, teams that they really can compete with. Uh, this could be big because Baltimore is not a great team either. Who knows? We may be sitting here a week from now talking about a two-on-one Browns team going into the bye. Unbelievable. All right, so Andre and I are here. We're going to go to Tim Couch in just a second. I want to go to Eric the referee. Hello, Eric the referee. How are you? Hello. It's a nice day. I even gelled my hair for it. I oh, thank hair. you. Oh, yeah. that's, that's good stuff. That's what everybody wants to look at. All right, what do we got coming up on the show today? Because we don't, we're not allowed to uh, have pre-show meetings. So what do you got? We got Tim Couch standing by, getting ready. Um, we got Chris Horn. He's got some funny tweets, including uh, Carlton breaking it down. Um, we got Bone Lady coming up. At Wait, what? Carlton? Carlton, like, it's so unusual. So, someone, someone had a, a, a funny picture. Uh, this is what a Browns win is like, and it's Carlton breaking it down. Okay, we'll uh, do that. Right. Okay. That's, I'm excited, man. Like, this is getting <laughs> we, got, that. we got Bone Lady at 730. We'll grade the team with Tim Couch. And Are you Rowe. awake? You sound like you're asleep over there. I am, I am a little fatigued here. Okay. Too, busy, too busy putting jello uh, in there. We can, uh, the best part of the day is going to be at 8.15 when we can bring in Matt Lodi and taunt him for his team getting destroyed on Thursday by the Ravens, who we play That would be the Sunday. Steelers. Yes, and uh, Matt Wood coming up at 8.25, Dogs by Nature. All right. Well, look at that. All right, next time, we'll see if we can put the microphone right in front of your face so we okay. can see. Look at that. Look at Much that. better. All right, Eric, the referee, joining us. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right, can we just go right to Tim Couch because I need to hear what he has to say. So, hey, Tim, how are you this morning? You're looking good. Can you He's hear him? He's talking. I can't hear him. We either. can't hear him at all. Oh, you can't hear me? No, oh, now we can. Now we yeah. can. Okay. Oh, there we go. I'm great. How are you guys doing this morning? Good, We're doing man. great. I mean, it's just so much fun to see a win. And I think I was thinking of you all week showing us that game ball from when you beat the Saints. And I kept thinking in the back of my head, yeah. you know what? That was such a great feeling. And then we get to feel that again this morning. What a great win, man. That, that was exciting. Um, you know, it was, it was a good team win. I thought uh, they played well. You know, you guys were talking about the defense earlier. I, I was really impressed with the way the defense played in this football game. You know, going against 
uh, you know, Drew Brees and, and those type of wide receivers that they have. And, you know, Jimmy Graham hurt them, obviously, but, uh, you know, I don't think there's really an answer for that guy. But really, the other wide receivers didn't do anything. You know, we took away all their guys. Uh, Marcus Colson didn't even have a catch in that football game. So uh, a really, really good team win and uh, an exciting game to watch. Very exciting, Tim. I think when you see a guy like Drew Brees have no rhythm for so long in a game, you just don't see teams do that. Obviously, Jim O'Neill and Coach Petten had a great game plan against them. But as you said, when Graham got going, you get worried. But it seems like even late in the game, they still had that offense stymied. They, they really did. And, uh, you know, I thought the game plan was phenomenal from Coach Petten. And, and uh, you know, you, you just Jimmy Graham, they tried everything they could, they could try on the guy. They played man coverage. They had Joe Hayden on him. They had linebackers on him. They had safeties on him. They had screen on him. Um, he, he just can't cover him. He's too big. He's too physical. He knows how to use his body. And, and Drew's so accurate putting the ball in there to him that uh, Drew can put it in spots where only Jimmy can go up and get it. But, uh, you know, they, I thought they got a lot of pressure on Drew. I thought Paul Kruger played a, an excellent football game. You know, he, he had a lot of quarterback pressures. He had a sack. Um, you know, Carlos Dansby, I thought, was phenomenal in this football game uh, in run support and also getting pressure on the quarterback as well. And he had the big sack, obviously, that pushed him out of uh, field goal range there at the end. But uh, the defense played a phenomenal game, I thought. And, uh, you know, that, that's an explosive offense that uh, certainly didn't want to start the season 0-2. And, and, you know, it's not easy to shut those guys down. But I thought they did just enough to allow their offense to go down and uh, have a chance to win it at the end. And that's all you can ask for. You bring that up and we go back to that last drive. They get the ball in the four yard line. You're a former quarterback. Andy brought up that football behind you from when beating New Orleans. As a quarterback, Tim, what's going through your mind when you're watching Brian Hoyer try to get this team to the field goal, into field goal range with the clock ticking? You know, really, as a quarterback, that's what you live for, man. That's, uh, that's the situation you want to be placed in. Uh, you know, in the NFL, really, all you can ask for is a chance to win it at the end. And uh, if, you, if you get that every week, I think you're pretty happy. And uh, so you just got to go down and make the plays. And the, the throws that Brian made on that last drive were just, uh, just phenomenal. You know, his day wasn't flashy, but he was, he was steady. He was, uh, you know, he was tough. He got hit really, really, t really hard a couple times, and he just bounced right back up. But that last drive, uh, the throw across the middle to, uh, to Barnage, uh, I believe on fourth down, and then the next throw to, to uh, Miles Austin on the sideline. And then obviously you get Hawkins wide open on the blown coverage. But, you know, he made some, some unbelievable throws in, in crunch time. And, you know, just every, every week, you know, the first week, you know, against Pittsburgh, he brings his team back on the road. And then, you know, here at home in the home opener, you know, he leads his team down for a game win and drive. So he's earning respect every week in the locker room from those guys. And he's, he's obviously becoming the leader of this offense. Tim, we talked about this yesterday on our, our Sports Sunday show. I think the difference between – it was funny because as I was watching the last drive, and I really want your perspective on this, as I watched the last drive, I think from a fan's perspective, it felt slow. It felt a little disjointed. It felt like they weren't going down the field. They were going off on the side of the field. But as I kept looking at the clock, I kept thinking to myself, one week ago, Ben Roethlisberger was in the same situation. And if, if Roethlisberger's doing it and the plays don't look perfect – you know it's Ben Roethlisberger, and you're like, you know what, they're going to get into scoring position. Yesterday it was right. Brian Hoyer in that same position, and I really think the end of those games are a matter of perspective. If you go back and look at yesterday's ending, it's exactly the way it should have worked out. Sure, it's not doesn't look beautiful in the front, but Hoyer got them. I think that's all a matter of how much you have confidence in your quarterback at the end of the game as a fan to watch it. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh... You know, really, you know, you, you get those uh, those two minute drives, and you get faced with those situations. Really, all you want to do is get the drive started and get some easy completions, and just kind of get the chains moving. So, you know, they hit a hitch outside to Austin for a first down, and you know, just some easy pass. And then they got backed up on the fourth down throw, and he had to make a great the, the great throw, which you know, the Barnage. You, you know, even for a Louisville guy, I was cheering for Barnage. You know, and that's hard for me to do, guys. You know, being a Kentucky guy, but uh, you know, that, that was a great catch across the middle that he made. You know, a lot of velocity on that ball in traffic. Um, you know, but that's just, uh, you know, some of the drives, they don't look pretty, you know. But, you, you know, the end result is, you know, you only need a field goal to win the game. So, you, so you're not in too big of a rush that you don't have to go all the way down and get a touchdown. So, you know, you're only trying to get to a certain area on the field to give your kicker a chance. And, and uh, you know, the receivers made a bunch of plays for him. And, uh, you know, like I said, Brian made great decisions and, and was accurate. And, and uh, he got the job done. It didn't look as pretty as uh, some people would like. But uh, at the end of the day, it, it, was it was a win. It was a win. Here's a million-dollar question. How would you have felt if the quarterback, would, as a quarterback, if you had to get taken out for the rookie to get three snaps? <laughs> well, that's a great question. You know, I, I would have felt probably the same as Brian Hoyer did, and I know he wasn't happy with it. Um, you know, I, I just didn't see the point in that. You know, I, I understand that you kind of want to, you know, you want to get Manziel in the game, and, you know, the fans want to see him or, or whatever. But, uh, you know, if you, you're going to put him in and let him, maybe let him try to do something, you know, down the field, use his athletic ability. You know, he comes in the game and he hands the ball off a couple times, and, 
you know, I don't see why Brian couldn't just turn around and hand the ball off a couple of times. And, you know, the one time he, you know, he scrambled out and tried to make a play and, you know, it was knocked loose at the end of the, at the end of the catch. But, you know, he left Brian with a, I believe it was a third and 13 situation when Brian came back out on the field and all he does is goes out and throws a completion for a first down. So it was, uh, you know, I wouldn't have been real happy with it. I'm sure Brian wasn't as well, but, uh, you know, it's, it's part of what the coaches want to do. If they feel like it gives them a chance to win, then, you know, I guess everyone gets on board with it. Yeah, I think the most important stat was after Manziel threw his pass, they went down the field. That was the West touchdown right. yesterday. They, uh, Brian was four for four on that drive. And <laughs> right. if anything, you were looking for a spark. Maybe you thought Manziel was going to give it to you. You sparked Hoyer because I, I thought that was a, yeah. a difference maker for him. I think so, too. And, uh, you, you know, obviously Brian is a, uh, a fierce competitor. Uh, both guys are. Johnny is, too. Johnny's got that competitiveness in him as well. But, uh, you know, Brian uh, feels like this is his team, and rightfully so. You know, after the first two weeks, what he's been able to do, uh, he doesn't want to come off the field. And, you know, the guys in the huddle probably don't want him to come off the field either because they feel like he's their leader, and, and he can make all the plays. You know, Brian, Brian can make the plays as well. And, uh, you know, they, uh, they they did a good job of, of mixing things up yesterday. I really like Kyle Shanahan, uh, Shanahan's game plan of, uh, you know, they were balance you know it wasn't it wasn't an overwhelming performance by the running backs but uh, you know I thought they ran the ball effectively when they needed to and, and at times when they needed big gains on the ground Isaiah Crowell I thought he was explosive in the game West looked really really good uh, so so that wasn't overwhelming uh, running the ball but I thought they did just enough to keep New Orleans off balance Tim thank you so much we'll check back in with you in a half hour great perspective okay. as always thanks guys all right we'll talk to you in a little bit um, I know we're going to go back to the newsroom here in a second for Chris Horn. I want to take a quick phone call let's go to Betty who's been hanging on in Fairport Harbor hi Betty how are you hello again how are you hey, good <laughs> hey wait. oh let me tell you this tell I us. had a brain surgery <laughs> remember last week I had called yes and he said who who would I want to have the brain surgery? The oh, yeah. Experience guy. <laughs> well, it looked like we had it, didn't we? It worked. We're all so, thinking a little better today, aren't you, we? Are you happier Thanks. than Johnny played? I am. That made my day. But I had already called the game. I said, we've got this game before it started. And well, they we said, should have ah. called you in pregame. Hey, what do you got for next week? Yeah, what you, got, got? you have to spread <laughs> next week, too? Or How what? about the lottery tonight? I know they go pick three at noon. What do you got for that? Oh, I got 382. Oh, I'll write that down. Give me a pin. Hey, uh, you got to split it if we win. I, oh, no doubt. We'll do this all we'll week. We'll do that. No problem. Make sure we get her number. And, we'll figure that out. And I was going to tell you, if Tim didn't get out there, I mean, not Tim. <laughs> Sorry, Johnny. Tim. If Johnny didn't get out there this next week, I was going to say, I can sit on the bench for a tenth, a tenth of what he's making. <laughs> I think we all can would. I, yeah. Can, no can I come in? <laughs> it all sounds good. Well, so, Betty, you're happy this morning. That's all that matters, right? And I am. I said, give the dog a bone. You okay. got it. He got it. He got it. Victory Monday. Hey, I'm waiting for my t shirts. Make it three. Okay, well, sounds good. Take care of that, Eric, the referee, will you? All right. Yeah, all right, thank you. I don't get a t-shirt, Eric. I don't think you have a bunch of t-shirts. All right, let's you go. Speaking of t-shirts, do you yeah. like this as a brown? I do. You know what I, I like about that shirt? What do you like about it's it? It's the C. Yeah. Because it's not, it's kind of subtle. Can I, yeah. It's the Hartford Whalers effect yeah. when it comes to <laughs> Very much. I got to say this. I, I was kind of making fun, of, not making fun of the Browns about this, this the field mm -hmm. and letting the fans vote on coloring it. I thought it was pretty cool. From TV and just looking at it, the field look awesome compared to all the other grass stadiums you saw around the league. And painting the, painting the end zones made a difference. I liked it. That was a good job, Kevin Griffin and Alex Shiner. Good job. It, yeah. made the, it made it look like a big game at the stadium. Congratulations yeah. on that. All right, let's go back to the newsroom now. We're joined by Chris Horn, who is our uh, social media expert who took in the game yesterday as well. Uh, Chris, your thoughts on the game yesterday and uh, what's going on in social media? Well, first my thoughts. That was my first NFL game and uh, not a bad one. I think I might be the uh, Browns. Good luck charm. Oh, boy. oh, of course you are. You're welcome. Thank you. I, I, I think that I brought my own personal hatred of the Saints to the game. And that helped push them over. It's not the coaching or the play on the field. This guy. Well done. Well yes. done. Congratulations. Yes. We like people that uh, stay in their own box and don't think of themselves as more important than everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you this morning, Chris. <laughs> I think you nailed my, my character perfectly. That's you did well. Excellent. All right, what are they um, saying on social media today? Apparently, Brown fans like winning more than losing. Oh, that's, that's a good one. That's wow. according to my research on you, the interwebs. Do you have anything on Spencer Lanning's helmet popping off for the second week in a row? How about that? <laughs> that should be social media all the way. All that, the way. That should be. That should be. Um, no, most folks are just like overjoyed and, and maybe overreacting a little bit. Um, I don't know if Eric, the ref, uh, the hair gel ref, has these tweets ready to roll. 
But Eric, uh, do you got him ready? Are you ready? I don't think they do. No, you have, no of course he's not he's ready. He's gelling his hair up, Chris. Please he's, compare. He's spending time in the mirror. I'm not sure that that's actually hair gel. <laughs> I don't want to go there. I don't want to go but, there. I'm just saying. You know, there are no rules because if yeah. somebody yeah. made a joke about something without Mary, then I think that would be inappropriate at this point. Stop it. I just want to say, but there are no rules on the show. Anyways, go ahead. I, I would never make that joke. Um, all right. So you have to see this because there were some great graphics. Uh, uh, at M Cheney 317 had the uh, crawl dance that uh, Eric referenced earlier. Maybe someone can do the dance for us here on video. Well, I'll, I'll read the tweet. I think that'll be for you since you're reading it. You'd have a rhythm with it. Yeah, why don't yeah, you why do not? it? Come well, on. isn't Macy standing behind you? Yeah. No, Who's actually, that's, you? that's that's you. That's Collins. Oh yeah. well, Macy was there like two seconds ago. All right, I'll tell you well, what. We'll come back. There's to you. there are Oreos back here. Ooh. Yeah. And so if you want to talk about like a good Monday morning, you have a Browns win. Yeah. And then you have a I'm table full of Oreos. Like every flavor that they make now, Whoa. they did a taste test. That scares me about Oreos. Why can't Oreos? I'm good with Oreos. double stuff. That's yeah, a, that's good about double a, stuff cooking. About well, you guys are classic. You're old school. You're not going to go for the. Uh, I am old school. Calling us old cake. now, huh? All right, Chris. Uh, I want to get to Kenny Rohde here, but just tell me if you want to get in, in, involved in the show, social media wise, what do you need to do? Hashtag dogs on the run. Uh, you can also tweet at us at Woos. Uh, post something funny on our Facebook page. We'll we'll be looking for you. And everyone, thank Chris for the win since it was all. Thank because you. Of nice him. job. Thank you, Chris. Way to wear that on your back. All right, see if you can get someone to do the Carlton for us. We appreciate it. All right.